everybody, and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are doing a tutorial on the feathered wreath, and this is going to be a basic feathered wreath that we're going to use in a few different areas. We're going to use it in a square block. We're also going to use it as a free floater out in the modern quilt spaces that we all are trying to find something to utilize in the big open spaces. The one thing I want to remind everybody is unless you are using a sit-down machine, uh, when you use a stand-up machine like we are today, you want to make sure to utilize an extended base for your brand of machine. The other thing, since we are using rulers, is you'll want to make sure to check and make sure that the foot on your machine is a ruler foot, because a lot of the brands of machines will have different feet based on whether or not you're going to be utilizing rulers or not. Today we are working with the wonderful Innova machine. This is a 22 inch. It has the lightning stitch and we have our base in place. And now we're going to head over to the quilt and we're going to start talking about how we would plan a wreath. The first wreath we're going to do is just going to be a basic drop in wreath. And to do that, we're actually going to utilize a marking tool, which is the blue marks be gone because I'm doing it on blue because later on I'm going to ink this. The other thing that I'm going to utilize is three circles. And here we have the Quilter's Apothecary circles. And we have small, medium, and large. What I'm going to do is, since I'm dropping it in, I make sure that the large circle, which is what I start with, is going to fit within the throat space I am utilizing. And I approximate the space where I'm going to drop it in. I'm going to make just a light registration line or mark right there. I'm going to drop the round ruler and center the center of that right on there. And very simply, I'm just going to mark this. Now remember, this is going to come away with the sew clean. So the blue mark will not be there permanently. The outside mark, because that is the large one we're using, is just going to be a registration point so that when I feather, I know where to feather to. The next one I'm going to drop in would be the small. And so I'm going to center the small circle right on that center registration line so it's going to be dead center in the wreath which would make a traditional feathered wreath. The next circle I'm going to utilize is going to be a medium circle and again when I get ready to use that I'm going to center that with the crosshairs right in the center of that wreath and this is actually the ruler that we're going to use to do the um, spine or the center of the feathered wreath. So now we have that in place. Let's bring the machine over. Here we have the medium Quilter's Apothecary circle. I'm going to come up, line up my stitches, making sure that the crosshairs are right in the center of that particular circle that we marked earlier. I'm going to lock my stitches. I prefer to snip my tail so I don't have a long tail to work around. And then I'm going to hold the handle, the leverage handle on the apothecary circle. And very simply while I'm holding that, I'm going to go around the circle. And you want to make sure to keep your circle stable. With the handle, of course, it's not going to get as much slippage. So we're going to go right around and meet right where we started. So you're not going to come around here and have it be off of it. It should go right on that particular line. Now what we're going to do, we have our spine in place and we're going to take our feathers for the inside of this wreath and we're going to do the stencil type feathers rather than the traditional long arm feathers. And when we do that, we're going to make all of our feather fronds different sizes. But I want to make sure that a nice amount of the feather fronds come and actually touch this circle. But again, I'm going to be utilizing various size feather fronds. So I'm going to begin with my feather fronds. And again, I'm not going to have them all touching that center circle. Come around. On occasion, I'm, I'm going to swing in there. Now obviously normally I'd be using a thread that's conducive to the project and so it wouldn't be the stark dark thread. But we wanted to make sure that you could see what we were doing.
Now the one thing to remember, because I'm doing different size feather fronds, is that you can utilize any type of feather fronds for the inside of this wreath that you want. The only thing that I would suggest is to not utilize the traditional long arm feathers. When you utilize the stencil type feathers that we're doing here, it tends to be a little bit more forgiving. Again, the human optic nerve is gonna automatically self-correct. That's why we're hitting the center circle with a various amount of the feather fronds, but not all of them. It's gonna fool the eye and make it a perfect circle once you look at it. Now we're gonna sneak up here. We're gonna connect at the end. And then we're gonna start on the outside. And again, I'm not gonna take them all to that outer guideline that we marked. I like this particular method, especially if I'm working in modern quilts. It's because it's a little bit more free flowing and it also is definitely a lot more forgiving. Again, you can utilize any of the stencil variations that you like of feather fronds. And you're gonna work your way all the way around the outside of the wreath. Here we'll do a couple hens and chicks, baby, adolescent, teenager, mother, go back to the big and then start over. One, two, three, bump, four. Baby, adolescent, teenager, mother. Come around, I'm gonna connect right there, lock my stitches, pull away, and then I'm gonna get rid of the blue mark with the silk clean. So there we have our basic feathered wreath. And now we're gonna move into some other type wreaths in our next tutorials. Everybody have a wonderful day and take care of each other. We'll see you down the road. Mm -hmm.